I cook gluten-free at home all the time because my youngest son is a celiac. So these are just two very quick sort of family recipes that I do that make my life a lot easier and I hope they'll give you a platform. Um, the first one is a gluten-free muffin with garlic, mushroom and mozzarella. Ben, I struggle with bread. Sometimes it often breaks up and try and eat sandwiches. But I never wanted him to have a different thing in his lunchbox. And if he went with a muffin, it was what everybody else was eating. So this is one of the muffins that I do that he takes in his lunchbox. Um, if it gets there. Quite often I come down and it's been eaten before we even get there. So that's the usual thing. I'm thinking I've got stuff and the kids have eaten them. And then the second one I do, something I like to do is a bit more special, but it really is a very quick recipe. It's a prawn bhaji with a spicy coriander dipping sauce. So if we crack on, the first thing I want to do is get the mushrooms on. At home, I would probably cook these and in all fairness, uh, leave them to cool down a little bit. Here, we're not gonna have quite that luxury. So they're probably gonna be just a little doughier if you want to taste them than they would be at home. But that's to do with time. It's to, you know, we wanna get them in and on. There's a pack of chestnut, chestnut mushrooms there. When I try and do things for recipes uh, like this, I try and do whole packs of things. There's nothing worse than getting a recipe and then you come home and you've got a quarter of a pack or half a pack of something and you're thinking, what do I do with that? So it's just a whole pack of chestnut mushrooms, quite rough chopped. Because it, the first time I did it, I finally chopped them and it was a mistake. It's nice to be able to have the bits of uh, lumps of mushroom, so to speak. And then I've got two really nice big cloves of garlic. If you don't like garlic as much as me, you really don't have to use that much. But we like to make bends so that none of the girls fancy them at the moment. They can't be kissing. <laughs> so it's really basically... I'm going to use fresh thyme. I use a lot of fresh herbs. But I also, quite often in this recipe, use dried herbs. If I haven't got any, a teaspoon of dried... I wouldn't use dried thyme because dried thyme can be quite... Um, it's quite strong flavour, it's a lot stronger than ordinary thyme, so the fresh thyme is lovely, it, uh, but if I use a mixed one, it's usually an Italian mixed herb or you know, just a general mixed herb. And put some of that in there. I was out in the garden this morning, about seven o'clock before I came, picking this, so it's rather lovely. There's nothing quite like the smell of mushrooms cooking in butter with garlic and thyme, I think it just, whatever, it always, it's always going to work, isn't it? And in there, I'm just going to put some salt. My little spice tray here. Comes everywhere. It's going all over the country, this spice tray, I have to say. And some pepper. As I say, having Ben was diagnosed very early as a celiac, so a lot of people ask me how long I've been cooking gluten-free food. And actually, it's close to 14 years now, 12, well, 13 years. He was diagnosed when he was two. He was really ill from birth. Um, we never knew why. And I fought and fought, and eventually we got his diagnosis. Um, and to be honest, it was a relief because it was something that I could do. It sounds awful. I wasn't relieved that he was ill, but it was something that I could do something about, and I could make it better almost immediately by food. You know, and, it, and I'd always cooked. I love cooking. Um, I think I can say now that I was actually quite a good cook, so <laughs> it was quite easy to do. And. Um, and I just decided that it was going to be difficult enough, you know, when you get asked for pizza or things, it's quite difficult for him, that actually what I was going to do with him is cook gluten-free at home. So we all sat down and ate the same meals. And it's worked brilliantly for us. Um, I am not gluten-free. If I go out, I do quite enjoy not eating, having being able to eat a piece of nice bread or something. But he is, and at home, we respect that. And we sit down and we all eat the same meal. And what I've tried to do in my recipes is if it's not as good or better than a recipe that you would have that is not gluten-free, um, don't have it. I don't think you should be able to really taste the difference. And that's my motto. Um, when Ben was first diagnosed, there wasn't the amount of help there is now, all the recipes online and things. So I, I just had to make things up. So I do go things about things slightly different than other people sometimes. But I think it was more instinct with me. Um, now it's lovely, you get access to so many other beautiful, you know, amazing things. So I'm gonna take those off. And what I've done here is I've got 225 grams of natural yogurt. Please don't use the low fat one because it can split. And just two large eggs. I've got an equal amount of ordinary white plain flour. And I'm gonna put two teaspoons of baking powder in there. 
I always tend to overdo, you know, I, I think that's one thing with gluten-free baking. You tend to use an awful lot more than you normally would. Um, so it's two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm also going to use half a teaspoon of bicarb. If you haven't got it, you don't have to. But I'm sure any of you out there, if, if some of you want to be gluten-free, you're, you're happy to use any one of these um, because it's an actually gluten-free product. If you're a celiac, please make sure that you have the free-from one because there is a problem across contamination with um, some of the products out there. But if you just want to go gluten-free, the others are fine. If you're a celiac, you need this free-from label. So I'm going to combine the yogurt and egg mixture. And I find the secret is with gluten-free is not to overwork things. It, it seems to like to be quite delicately handled. Um, so I'm just going to bring it together. And hopefully you can see the yogurt is almost always reacting with the agent to give nice bubbles and lots of air in there, which is what we want. Normally, these would be allowed to cool for a little bit. Don't let the butter go hard because then it's not going to mix in. But obviously today, as I said, we're just going to have to stick it straight in. And you can do that at home, but it's quite nice to leave it to cool. This makes six really nice sized muffins. And I'd like, you can use ordinary muffin cases. I just like these tulip muffin cases. I just think they look so pretty. Just give it a little bit more extra. Combine the mixture, and we're just going to put them in the muffin case, really. This is when I make a mess, and we end up with muffin cases that are all covered around the side. <laughs> if you bear with me. I don't have an oven on stage, so what the lady's going to do for me is she's going to take them off and put them in the oven backstage. The thing is with this recipe, because we're going to put mozzarella in the middle of them, you can't actually do the normal test that you would for muffins, which is to um, put a, a toothpick or something in if it comes away clean. So what we're going to do is I'm going to literally cook them for exactly 18 minutes. I've timed this. I know it sounds uh, very precise, but if you cook them for 18 minutes, I found they come out cook perfectly every single time. The recipe for this I did for the BBC Good Food magazine. So I don't actually own the rights, you can't, I can't publish them. So if you want the recipe, if you go online BBC Good Food, it was in the April issue, and I know it's online there, so you can find it quite easily. And then I've got some nice mozzarella. It doesn't have to be the most expensive one, but anything. And I'm literally gonna take a really nice big lump that very technical turn of lump, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. and just stick it in the top. I, I, I'm a great believer that if something says it's going to be a, a mushroom and mozzarella muffin, you should be able to taste the mozzarella and the garlic and the mushroom, you know. If, you, if it's got the description on the thing, then let's make it actually taste of something. But is everybody here, are you all gluten-free? Is everybody gluten-free? Celiacs or? Yeah. So it's quite a tough diagnosis when you first get it, but I think once you start eating that way and realizing it um, just becomes a way of life, really. I'm just going to use a teaspoon to roughly go over the top of them and cover that mozzarella up. Uh, you can be a bit more precise, but I quite like things when they look homemade. I think it's quite nice, look a bit rustic. That's my excuse for maybe not taking as much time sometimes when you're working quickly. And that's those. They then go in the oven for 18 minutes um, and you've got a really nice lunch dish or a packed lunch dish or whatever. And I think we're gonna be able to taste those later as well. So while they're in the oven, I'm gonna make my spicy prawn bhaji. This I love and I love uh, bhajis because chickpea flour is naturally gluten-free and it gives you a real lovely taste. Again, be careful, but the thing is with chickpea flour, it's very rarely milled where normal flour is. So it, you've got the, uh, that much more flexibility almost with it. And this is a 
again, a really simple re recipe. I, I sometimes feel a bit of a fraud standing up here and doing these things. But when you're at home, you do not want to be spending hours and hours. And a lot of gluten-free recipes I find have got masses of processes in them and loads of different things. And they end up well, costing you a fortune. And nobody's got two hours to spend afterwards doing one thing. So this is quite a nice starter if you want to do something when people come around. There's four tablespoons of chickpea flour, which is garam, 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 gram flour. And then I've got two teaspoons, it does sound like it's a lot, but it does work, of garam masala. And whichever blend you like to use, some of them are more scented than others, you know, it's, it's up to you which one you like. Two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of turmeric, and about half a teaspoon of chili powder. If you don't like it really spicy, cut that down. If you like it spicier, put it up. You know, it's, 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 that's purely down to your taste. And I'm gonna put, uh, it's about four teaspoons of lemon in there. So about 20 mils, because it's quite nice to counteract the, garam masala can be quite bitter on the palate and I think the acid just works really well. Some salt and pepper again, or salt mainly I think with this one. And then we're gonna put about four tablespoons of water just to bring it so it's a nice thick batter. I put that on. <laughs> I forgot to put the oil in it. And we might be smoking a bit when we put the oil in that. Oh dear. It's just like cooking at home, isn't it? Is this going to go boosh, 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 isn't it? Yeah. This is, um, I'm using rapeseed oil here purely because it comes from local where I live um, and it's a beautiful product. But if you want to just use sunflower oil or whatever oil is gluten free. Again, vegetable oils I tend to avoid because they can be contaminated with wheat. Um, it's, you know, it, it's where they grown. Often these things are naturally gluten-free, but if you're growing like oats, if you grow them in a field next to wheat and you're really severe celiac, it can make a difference. I think maybe we should have a bottle with a better pourer in here, shouldn't we? So, good job I looked at that. Four tablespoons of water, just to bring this to a nice batter, a thick batter to coat the prawns in. And you see, it's, it's really dark, and you almost think you've overspiced it, but I promise you, when you actually taste them, they're not. It's really quite pleasant. You can just double, you, same with the muffins, you can double these quantities up or whatever. And then I'm just gonna put some prawns in there and get them nicely coated. You might want a little bit more water in that, just a tiny bit. Obviously, if you've got a deep fat fryer at home, um, that's quite nice to do these in too. I'm just gonna coat the prawns in the batter. I quite like the ones when you get the ones with the um, the tails on as well, because that's really pretty when you put them on the plate. But good old Waitrose didn't have them this morning, so <laughs> we've got the ones without the tails. I was sure they would, but no, no, they didn't. It was saying. And the way to test if the batter is ready is like all is if the oil is hot enough is like always just a little bit of batter in. If it rises to the top and it's nice and bubbling then you can tell that it's ready. And we're just gonna coat these prawns. She says, easier said than done. And lay them in gently. Try to make sure, yeah, they're not stuck. Sometimes when you do it in a pan, they do tend to stick a bit. But this is such an easy recipe to do at home and um, I love it and the kids love it too, so if I can get them eating fish in any way, shape or form, to be honest, I'm quite happy because I've got two that eat fish and two that don't, so. And what I like them to do is I, I like people to be able to come in my house and not realise that they're eating gluten-free food. I think that's really important, that they just come in and they know it's nice food. So did anybody watch MasterChef? Anybody here <laughs> watch Master Chef? <laughs> I know they had Benita here last year, bless her. She wasn't very well on the show, but she was fine when she was here. But 
Um, yeah, it, it's an amazing experience, I must admit, I was so lucky. I only went on it because the children sort of persuaded me that I should. And um, never in a million years thought that I had any hope in hell of winning. And to, to be standing up here now and doing it is just amazing, I have to say. You see, this is quite a thick batter. If you want to make it a little bit looser, please do. But I, because it's a bargy, I think it's quite nice to really coat it quite thickly. Um, if you want to make it a little bit lighter, as I say, you, you feel free. You, you can add a little bit more. As long as it sticks, you're fine. Which this is proving not so good at doing. There you go. And these come out. They don't take very long at all. And as soon as the batter is a lovely golden brown, you know that the prawns are cooked. So that sort of colour. I haven't, in the recipe it says use turmeric. Today I haven't used turmeric, because if I use turmeric, I really like to have um, gloves on or something, and I didn't bring them, because I end up with bright yellow fingers, looking like my grandfather, he used to make 60 a day, so um, <laughs> if you can bear with me, it does make them that much more golden color and a very pretty color too. So we're just going to put those on a plate and I'm going to make a spicy coriander dipping sauce to go with those. And again, it's a very, very simple recipe. A lot of my things are, I say I will sometimes feel like a little bit of a fraud sometimes. So if you take a really nice bunch of coriander, if you don't like coriander, and a lot of people don't, to them it's the idea of eating um, soap or something. I love it, but you know, use flat leaf parsley. Don't use the green leaf one, it's a bit bitter, but the flat leaf parsley you can make this sauce with as well. And I'm gonna ask the lady, all I've done is chop the stalks off. You can pick, if you was in a restaurant, and I've done it many times when I've been working with different chefs, you have to pick through parsley and pick through coriander. Don't do that at home, I just chop the big stalks off. Make sure it's washed. We're gonna blanch it backstage quickly um, in some boiling water. And the reason you blanch it, you can use it like that, but if you blanch it, you'll retain that beautiful, vibrant green color, which is what you want in a dip. You want it to look really pretty. And we've done that. With that, I'm gonna serve the sauce. And I've got here, it's uh, a few tablespoons of natural yogurt. And I've topped half a chili uh, finely, and I'm gonna use that in the sauce and a little bit on the top to decorate. And then we've got some lemon juice freshly squeezed lemon. If you've only got the stuff in the bottle, that works, but it, I think it tends to give a slightly bitter, acidic uh, parallel that you don't get when you use it fresh. And some salt, and that's all it is. So as soon as the coriander comes back, you do really need one of these. If you've got one of these stick blenders at home, it makes life so much easier. If you haven't got one and you wanna chop it, please feel free, it just takes a lot longer. Um, I always think when I'm standing up here that people don't really wanna watch me standing here chopping garlic and chopping coriander for hours or peeling a potato because that's really boring for you guys and I do it enough at home as well so we don't really want that. Well I have to say one of the great things about being on MasterChef is that it's opened the doors to so many things and I get asked you know what are you actually doing now and I'm doing things like this all the time I travel all over the country next week I'm in Manchester uh, thank you last week I was in um, oh, where was I last week Hereford um, so I travel a lot over doing different presentations all around the country, which I really love and for me is such a joy because just seeing all the beautiful British food and the produce that we've got um, is, is quite amazing to be honest. It really is a very, very special thing. So we've got, that, we've got some lemon juice. I'm going to save a little bit of this just to make it look pretty on the top. And we're going to put some salt in. Please feel free to adjust I might need a bit more yoghurt actually. So can I have some more yoghurt? It's backstage. Thank you. I won't be able to talk. I love this thing. It works. It, it does make life a lot quicker than chopping. Thank you. Thank you. It's not, it's, it's not yoghurt. <laughs> for yogurt it doesn't matter it's, I've got enough it's absolutely fine <laughs> don't worry it's fine it's quite funny and taste always taste your stuff you know it, it's what thank you 
that's delicious. It's really good. She says, it's good that I think my own food is delicious, isn't it? It would be awful if I tasted it and went, yuck. But it's really just make it into a nice, fine dipping powder and hopefully don't splash everybody around. Yeah, we should probably be close to our muffins being cooked as well, which would be lovely. And then you can see, because we blanched it, that's that beautiful bright green, um, which makes a really lovely colour. At home, I would do a lot more prawns. Thank you. We're just going to sprinkle some fresh chilli over the top. A bit of colour. Um, do we have a cloth or something, please, just so I can wipe the plate? Thank you very much. It's like working in anybody's new kitchen. That's one thing I've found when you start doing these things. You come around and you think, oh, well, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then you suddenly realise that when I make a mess when I cook in other people's kitchens, which I don't do at home, because I clear up after myself. But two, you, you, you've always something, thank you, that you've slightly forgotten or that you, you, know, you can't find. And you think you've got everything prepped before you get on stage and then you come on stage and you haven't always. So bear with me. So we're just gonna, I prettily arrange those prawns somehow. There we go. And our sauce. Normally you would have a lot more prawns around there to go with the matching sauce, but hopefully you get an idea of how easy that is to actually do. And that's a really lovely starter. The kids eat it and it's taken me, I don't know, how long was that? Five minutes. So it's, it's generally not a difficult one to do. Excuse me, I'll wipe my hands on this now. I'm just waiting for the muff, muffins to come out the oven. But I was hoping to show you today how easy it can be and that it doesn't have to be a difficult process. And I think a lot of people do make gluten-free cooking unnecessarily complicated. And honestly, I think it's um, in many ways easier. And certainly um, I'm over on another stage later on today and I'm gonna be making flatbreads. And I find them easier than making it the traditional way. And same with some breads and things because you've got none of the kneading and none of the proving and stuff. So actually, it's a positive. And people often say to me about, you know, I don't know, if you watch MasterChef, one of the things I did was I put popcorn on with a lobster dish. And quite simply, it's because I genuinely think outside the box. Because I'm so used to cooking gluten-free, I don't always think to make a biscuit or a traditional method. I like to try and do something that's a bit different. And that's why I put popcorn on there for texture. And so in some ways, it can be a really positive thing. It doesn't always have to be um, a negative. And that's how I've tried to say to Ben is that you know this is great you know you get special food when you go on airlines and everything else and and it's just a sensible way of eating really so I'm, I'm really passionate about it and one of the things that I didn't say when I was on MasterChef was that I was cooking gluten-free because it's such an everyday thing for me and it's naturally the way I cook that I didn't even think to mention it to them and I think there was two occasions when I used wheat the whole time I was on the show um, so most of my stuff, and certainly in the final menu, apart from a tiny sliver of toast, which could have been a gluten-free bit, um, everything was gluten-free. It doesn't have to be to bake good quality food and nice tasting food. But I hadn't thought to say anything, and it wasn't until afterwards when I was chatting to my agent and I put the book through, and she said to me, you do realise you've written a gluten-free cookbook? And I'm like, oh, because <laughs> that's how I cook at home. It, it, it's just normal, it's natural and I've done it for a long time. And I think that, it, I, I really feel passionate about that side of it. It should just be good food, first and foremost, and, and really good tasting food, and nobody should walk in your house and know that it's gluten-free. That's, that's the way I try and cook. But with MasterChef, it was very funny because I put in my um, menus, and I would get, you know, there's no flour. Do you not need flour to make this sauce? Are you sure you're not thickening this with this? Are you not making a roux? And I'd be, no, I'm not. So I thicken sauces using corn flour. Always use corn flour. Um, never ever, I don't make roux. And actually, it's a lot healthier because you're not using all that butter. It's a much, much healthier way of cooking, I find. Are um, muffins ready, please? I think I the muffins will be ready in a couple of minutes. But can I, before they come out, can I ask you a question yes, about the course. muffins? I hope it's not too challenging. No. Um, if you don't eat mushrooms, could you use something else of instead? Of course. What could I you do. use? I do. Um, I use all different flavours. Once you've got the base recipe, um, I use turizo in them. 
uh, I, I, I make the little ones, uh, somebody's face is lit up, so I chop chorizo and I use different sorts of seeds, I make ham and pea ones, I, it, it, once you've got that base muffin mixture, you can then put whatever you want into it, be it sweet or savoury. And that's why I love it, because that mixture is so easy, um, and then you can make it what you want. Sometimes I do, if you get the tiny little sort of muffin cases, um, I make those for people when they come round. So I do lots of little ones and they love it because it's just a little bite of something to eat, particularly if there is something quite spicy like chorizo. Mm, nice. um, but I've, I've used all sorts of things in them. Uh, smoked haddock. Nice. Um, you know, made them and cooked them with a little egg in the top. There's all different things that you can do once you've got that mixture. And I think that's what I try to do. It's a bit like if you make bread and then you put loads of different flavourings in it. They'll be ready if you want to get them out. Um, you know, you, you just make things and once you've got that base recipe, you can make it what you want. And I, I, I am passionate about that as well, making my life easy. I've got four kids. I really did not want to be... Um, doing any more than I had to really which sounds terrible but it, it's very true I think when you are a busy mum you need recipes that are quick or are busy at home we're all working or doing stuff you need something that's easy and quick and you know it's going to work because there's nothing worse than spending hours cooking something and you get it and it doesn't work these this is why these don't last very long in my house because when you cut into them the best way to eat them, they are a bit hot at the moment, they would leave them to a little bit cooler, is when that mozzarella is just all sort of lovely and stringy, you know, a bit like a pizza. So I think we're going to cut these up. They are very hot. Um, and let people have a bit of a taste, yeah? We're going to do that. But please be a care, because no, I don't want anybody to get a mouthful of boiling hot mozzarella and burn your lip or something. But as I say, it's a base recipe you do with it what you want. Anyway, okay? I think it's somebody else's turn to chat now. Is it? Thank you very much, Jane. They look delicious. You're more than uh, welcome. I think you're all going to have a chance to try these in a second, but we have one question here. If you don't mind, I'll just bring no, the microphone. Course. I think I'll enjoy... Sorry. It's okay? I think I'll enjoy your recipes. Have you got your book on sale here? I beg your pardon. your recipes, sorry. Sorry, where would I find your recipes? Um, I have a website uh, with some, some West recipes on there. So if you look at Jane C. Devonshire, if you go to Jane Devonshire, there's an upholsterer somewhere in the UK who's getting an awful lot of website hits at the moment. But it's Jane C. Devonshire, and there's a lot of recipes on there. Um, there'll be a book coming out next year. And also, these muffin recipes are on the BBC Good Food website because I did them for the Good Food magazine. And so they have the rights to these particular muffins. These ones, uh, that's not published yet, but I'm sure if you speak to me, I can give you a recipe. <laughs> Do you want to help me cut them up? Are there any other questions, burning questions, anybody would like to ask Jane at the moment? Yes, we've got another one at the back here, just coming along. Um, with the um, prawn recipe, were they raw when you put them in or were yes. they... They were raw. Yeah, okay. they're raw. I use raw king prawns um, and obviously devein them uh, because um, that's, that's just a nice thing to do. But I, I use raw and then they cook very quickly in that hot fat surrounded by thing. If you use the ready cooked ones, they're going to go really hard and chewy because they will be overcooked. Thank you. Any, any more questions before we get it? They're just cooling down here. I know you're all sitting there <laughs> wanting to have a taste. <laughs> So they are, because one, they're too hot and we're trying to dish them up. But also, if you leave the mushrooms to just cool down that little bit more, because as soon as they hit the mixture, it starts cooking and it does go a little doughier. Whereas oh. normally they're a much lighter base. Jane, thank you very much. That's been absolutely brilliant. Would you all like to join me in a round of applause? Thank you You're more than welcome. very, very much, Jane. Okay.